So in the last video we have seen how to use comparator interface. In this video we'll talk about comparable. So just to demonstrate that, let me what, what we'll do is instead of creating the list of integers which we have done earlier, let's remove everything from here. Instead of creating a list of integers, I want to create a list of students. So I will say this is studs. So instead of creating the list of integers, I should be creating a list of students. Now how to do that? So first of all, we don't have any class called student, right? Uh, we do have. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in, the, in our package we have that. Let me just change this name to stud. Uh, okay, so we don't have any class called stud here. Okay, so what I will do is I will say class stud. This stud will have some variables. We'll say int roll number and marks and then we'll be having string name so we have these three variables i want to assign the value so i'll be using constructor so give me a constructor with fields yes and other things here okay so we got the constructor i also need a two string method so that when i print the value it should print when i print the object it should print the values even for that i will ask my eclipse to do that so we'll say source two string and we got all the elements click on okay and we got that as well so instead of creating a list of integers, we are going for list of stud now. Let's go for the first object. So we'll say studs dot add. So when I say you want to add a student, we have to say new stud. We have to pass the values. We'll say roll number 25 or 23 with name uh, Mahesh. And we'll set the roll number, I mean, we'll set the marks as 55. And we'll go for studs dot, oh, there's something wrong here. The problem is with sequence, we have to first insert let me just change the sequence here itself instead of going for because I prefer to go for roll number, name, and marks. We'll add the second object now. We'll say add. Let's have two more. We got these four objects here, right? And now we can print all the values, right? So we can use enhance for loop. There's nothing wrong with that. We can say stud s colon studs. So once we have added the values, we can even print the values, right? The advantage is when you print the object here. It will call the two string method, it will, it will print the object for you. So we got all this data here, right? And that's perfect. But now I want to sort these elements. Can we sort the elements here? Is it possible? Let's try. We'll say collections dot sort and let's pass the studs here. As soon as you pass studs here, your sort gives you an error. Sort says you cannot sort this collection is because it doesn't implement comparable interface. So whenever you want a class objects to be compared, we have what you have to do is you have to implement an interface called as comparable, which is compulsory for you. So if you want to sort the element, you have to you have to implement comparable. But now since you are implementing comparable, we have to let's go to comparable interface. Let's see what is there. Uh, comparable of studs. Let's go to comparable, and it has only one method called as compare to. Uh, that's awesome. What we can do is we can come here and we can define that method. We can say public int compare to. It is same like uh, the comparator interface where you have compare method. The difference is in compare you are passing two or two values. In compare to you pass only one value. We'll say of type stood. We'll say s, and we just have to compare now. Now based on what you have to compare. So when you say sort the values, based on what you are sorting the values. Maybe you want to sort based on the marks. So let's go for the marks here. We'll say return marks is greater than s dot marks. In that case, return one else minus one. So we are now we are sorting the elements based on marks. And you can see sort is not giving you any error now. It's because you have implemented comparable. And now if you run this code, you can see all these elements are sorted based on their marks. So we got 25, 36, 55 and 64. So everything is sorted based on the marks. You can also change the logic. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. So we have all this thing, right? I, again, we can change the logic. I don't want to sort based on the marks. I want to sort based on the name. So I want to sort the I want to sort based on the length of the name. We can even do that. We can say name dot length, then s dot length, s dot name dot length. And now if you run this code. You can see it is it is getting sorted based on the name. So we got four characters, we got five characters, we got six characters and six characters. So that's how you sort, you can sort the elements with the help of comparable interface. So when you have your own class stood, when, you, when you're creating a list of stood here, and when you want to sort the elements, your class need to implement comparable. In the last video we have seen, we, have, we, were, we were trying to sort integers. 
So we, was, we were able to sort integers because integer implements compatible interface. So that's about compatible. Oh, we have one more thing before that. So I have defined the logic here. So the logic is I want to sort based on their name. But let's say in case, I, I want to change the logic in future. Now this class, I cannot change the class. I want to sort this element based on the remarks. What I can do is I can actually pass the compatible object here. We can say this is i and j. We can give an arrow. We can say i dot i dot I want to I want to sort based on marks. I will say i dot marks is greater than j dot marks return one colon minus one. So even if you are assigned a logic based on their name, it will sort the element based on their marks now. So it doesn't matter what's the name, it will sort depend upon the marks. So even if you have compatible, you can override the logic with the help of compatible object. So that's it. Now that's it about this compatible interface.